And now to Ukraine, where President Zelensky has unexpectedly cancelled his planned address to U.S. senators via video link. No explanation has been given. He was expected to make a last-ditch appeal for more funding from the U.S. to help in the fight against Russia's invasion. The Senate is due to vote today on President Biden's emergency aid package worth more than $60 billion. Live now to um, Michael Bukhev in Kiev, who is a senior fellow at the Washington, D.C.-based Atlantic Council think tank. Welcome to the program. Why is it, do you think, that President Zelensky has cancelled this address? Sure, good to be with you. Well, I think uh, the toxicity of politics on Capitol Hill was just too overwhelming, too risky for the, the, the Zelensky administration to insert themselves in there. I think also there is a growing realization here in Kiev that um, some of his magic, some of his charisma is wearing off and perhaps he doesn't have the kind of powers of suasion that he used to. Um, you know, it's it's happening. It appears more and more that uh, domestic politics is interfering with aid to Ukraine. In fact, in my home country of Canada, there's a Canada-Ukraine free, tra free trade agreement that has also been caught up in politics. So probably they're going to have to do these calculations more and more and, and just um, try and uh, lobby in other ways to get this aid through. Do you think he's also concerned that the conflict in, in Gaza is also affecting the picture? Oh, absolutely. Um, not only in terms of aid. In fact, this $61 billion of aid to Ukraine uh, is part of a package of aid to Israel as well. So um, there's a realization that they have to probably work a lot harder to lobby for aid and also a lot harder to get the Ukrainian narrative across because uh, a lot of news coverage has shifted from Ukraine uh, to Gaza. But look, the main message they're making, and I certainly support this, is that if Mr. Putin is not pushed back, if this dictator who is at war with the rules-based international order isn't stopped, then this conflict will become much, much more costlier in terms of instability, higher food and fuel prices, and migration. So uh, hopefully that message will get to the ears of these uh, politicians in Washington. So broadly, from a geopolitical point of view, these two conflicts are very much linked. Oh, absolutely. And a big player in the background, of course, is Iran. In fact, overnight, um, Iran uh, sent via Russia 41 very damaging drones to Ukraine on the 651st day of the war. And uh, of course, they're also very active uh, uh, in, in this in the other theater of war, uh, arming, funding Hamas and Hezbollah. So they, they need to be dealt with. And uh, also, by the way, um, there also appears to be a linkage in um, warfare tactics. Uh, when I was in Israel recently, I spoke to people who, analysts who said that Hamas probably studied warfare tactics here in Ukraine, especially the use of drones and dropping explosives very surgically and adopted that on their own in their own tactics. So very interesting. But and sorry, one more quick thing. The, the the kind of gruesomeness, the brutality of warfare techniques, what Hamas did on the Israeli side, also what the Russians are doing here, uh, have done here in Bucha, it makes you wonder whether that's a new form of warfare. Thank you very much indeed for joining us.